So the current law in Texas right now is that uh, um, uh, private and control labels that are sold outside of the retail premise of the, of, the, of the IP owner that initiated the label in the first place is a prohibited thing of value. Now, what's the, th the intellectual basis for this all is the thing of value rule. I don't know if everyone in this room understands that, but a, a supplier, which is defined as a wholesaler or a producer or an importer, is prohibited providing a thing of value to a retail account. And that could be, that could be anything. It's, it's, it's a cash payment. It's a, traditionally a bribe. It's things like that. But a, a, other than the product purchase itself, you cannot offer a retailer, a thing of value in connection with the sale or distribution of alcohol. And there's been a lot of litigation on this. Two of the most recent cases involving this private and control label area is uh, the American Vintage Be uh, Beverage case versus the ABC in California. This is where the California, uh, uh, the product, by the way, was TGIF uh, uh, malt beverage um, uh, uh, margaritas, uh, distilled spirits products, but produced with a malt base. They were sold to convenience stores all over, the, all over the state. But they carried the TGIF logo on them. I could talk about it because this is a published case. Um, the ABC, at that particular, in that particular case, uh, said that, that a visual link between the product sold by a supplier and the name and identifying characteristics of a retailer was prohibited advertising to that retailer if sold outside of the retail account. And that's currently the law in the state of California. Now, is that enforced? Um, uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, are private labels outlined in outlawed in California outside of, of um, the IP owner's premises? That's really unclear. The investigations are continuing, and we're involved in several of them right now. And this creates a very slippery slope problem for everybody, because what is a thing of value? What isn't a thing of value? I mean, you're trying to sell value to your accounts when you're trying to, to market to them. A uh, similar case in Texas a couple of years ago. Uh, actually, it's just in the process of being resolved. Um, again, we're talking about the TGIF products, which were produced by Mark Anthony Brewing. And they were malt-based um, um, uh, distilled spirits clone products that were sold in, in uh, convenience stores. The advantage to malt-based products is they can be sold in, in um, off-premise locations that can't afford other products. The TABC asserted that the license agreement with the TGIF corporate IP owner, which was not a Texas licensee, constitutes a thing of value in the form of advertising of the TGIF retail locations. Again, a similar thing to, the, to what happened in California. Mark Anthony Brewing defended the case based on the First Amendment. Um, I was involved in that case. We won at the trial court. Unfortunately, we lost in the Court of Appeal. So the current law in Texas right now is that uh, um, uh, private and control labels that are sold outside of the retail premise of the, of, the, of the IP owner that initiated the label in the first place is a prohibited thing of value. And Texas is investigating this today. Um, there are several investigations going on in Texas as we speak on this particular issue. We've seen this in other states. We've seen it on the eastern seaboard in Massachusetts, in New York. Uh, we've seen it in Georgia, Idaho, Florida, uh, Louisiana. So don't pretend that this is, a, um, you know, this is an isolated problem. It's not. Um, it's going to have to be resolved one way or another. But um, the trade advisories on, on, on uh, marketing platforms need to be reviewed regularly with your, you and your counsel. Um, now, the suppliers, how are they responding to this? They're pushing back with constitutional defenses uh, under the 21st Amendment. I, I don't want to get into too, too much detail on legalisms, but the First Amendment affects uh, the 21st. The 21st Amendment gives the states the right to control the importation of alcohol in, into their state uh, in, vi in violation of their laws. Uh, um, and they, they 
take this as a broad uh, grant of authority. This is why you have state stores in you know, uh, Utah and Pennsylvania, the 21 state, different state store markets for spirits. Uh, that's all under the 21st Amendment. But the 21st Amendment is, in fact, affected by the other amendments. The First Amendment gives you a right to use your intellectual property. Um, that's one of them. The Commerce Clause says that a state can't use its rights to discriminate against another, another state. This is why the direct, these are the direct shipping wars that are going on right now. This isn't about the direct shipping wars, but this very much pertains to the same basic principle. Now, non-deceptive labels under the First Amendment on products are a form of advertising and are protected commercial speech under Central Hudson. Now, the Central Hudson test is, 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 is basic to understanding this area. Uh, for commercial speech to be protected, it must concern otherwise lawful activity and not being misleading. If that test is met, then you ask, is the asserted government interest substantial? Does a regulation directly advance the asserted governmental interest to a material degree? And is the restriction more extensive than necessary to serve the government interest?